talking. Okay, you guys ready? Ready. <clears throat> okay, on your mark, get set. We're about ready to go live. We're going live right now. Ha, 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 ha. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of BricsCAD Unplugged. I'm Don Strimbu. I'm Matt Oldham. <laughs> We're jumping on Go ahead, here. Vince. Vince with uh, sales and with technical. Um, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> he's a hybrid, man. He's, he's a like uh, a Prius, but much, much better. Than yes, a, yes, way better, way better, yes. And, and our dear wow. friend Heidi Hewitt is a bit under the weather today, and so we wish Heidi well, and we hope she gets better fast, because she's got to be on an airplane Saturday, so Heidi, get this stuff fixed, please. Yeah, we, we, Heidi, yeah, we, want, we miss you already, Heidi. We miss you already, and speaking of airplanes and things, next week, Bricks Cat Unplugged will be hosted from Ghent, Belgium and the Brixis HQ offices at Bellevue 5 slash 201. Um, cool. We're excited. We're excited. Gotta love Belgium. The beer is great. The people are wonderful. The weather is terrible, but hey, I'm in California right now, so I'm a little bit spoiled for <laughs> any place I go. At well, this hey, point. let's get on with the show, Don. Don't you have let's some Let's get update? on with the show. Matt yes. is our timekeeper. Thank you, Matt. Want to remind everybody that the London event our preparations are coming together beautifully October 23 and 24 at the brewery in Shoreditch, London, UK, Brixis 2018. It's going to be amazing. Uh, go to Brixis.com, click the banner at the top of the page and find out more about the event. The schedule is dynamic. We're adding sessions now. It's going to be really, really amazing, and it's focused on being successful in moving to BricsCAD. That's what the whole thing's about. So with that, Vince, who is our special guest today? Excellent. So I'm very excited. Today we have an individual that's going to come on uh, with us this morning, this afternoon, I think maybe even this evening for him. There's a hint. He's been a cat specialist since 1985 which is about when we all started I think that we're all in the same uh, been around forever uh, which is cool and he's been a he's uh, he's had roles in terms of CAD management consulting technical writing he's also similar to one of our previous guests he's been a contributor to Catalyst magazine for a few years back when it was on paper and he was the president of the Western Australian AutoCAD user group and oh, vice president of a company called Cadillac. We're giving away now, right? Yeah. Uh, he has, there's two sports that I want to mention. One is he's an international veteran uh, fencing champion. And he also plays a sport that none of us in the U.S. understand that's named after an insect. <laughs> Cricket. Cricket. We, don't, I, we just don't get it. I don't know. I, I don't. Welcome, our special guest I really today don't. is... Steve Johnson, can we bring him in? Steve yeah. Johnson. Here, here, here. Let me let me get him into the room with us, you guys. And Steve, hey. Steve, hey. say hello. Hello. Just moving things around here. Hi. Good Hi. Welcome. And 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 it's early here in California, and it's quite late in Perth. But we want to thank you for taking the time to come on and join us today, Steve. We're glad to see you. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. It's uh, four minutes past 10 in the evening here. Uh, so it's time for wine. Cheers. Time for wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're still doing coffee. We're, we're doing coffee. We're doing coffee. We're doing coffee. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> we can get you a Bricks Cad wine glass. In fact, we're going to work oh. on that next. That's a great piece of logo merchandise. A beer mug, a wine glass, and a coffee cup. You're covered 24 by 7 at that point. <laughs> Beautiful. There, there Thank you. you. In fact, hey. you should, we should put that 24-7 on there. That's Mm. Good yeah. idea, right? Good. Oh man, that was a good good segue, Vince. That was that was awesome. Bricks sys 24-7, our common data environment for sharing CAD data anywhere, anytime, with workflows and all kinds of cool stuff. And that's enough marketing for now. So yeah. What are we going to do with Steve? Because we've got him for 15 minutes. Let's. Well, well, you guys, last week when we talked about having a special guest, we all thought of Steve. And then I reached out to Steve, and Steve responded back and said, he wants to talk about the five 
things that really knocked his head off the tails, you know, with you know, dealing with Brick's CAD and what his surprises were. And so, so Steve, you know, one thing I want you to do right now is to brag about yourself. For people who don't know about you, can you tell us about yourself and some of your experiences? Ah, uh, well, uh, Vince has already uh, done, done that uh, pretty well. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing stuff for a, a long time. Uh, as was mentioned, I, I wrote uh, for Catalyst magazine back in the in the days when it it looked like this. <laughs> this is one from 1995, and uh, I I wrote a, a thing called Bug Watch. Uh, yeah, you may wow. remember that. I remember that. I remember, remember that. That. Uh, that was so the first I place I would always go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because oh, 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 oh. oh nice one, Vince. You kind of yeah. snuck that one in there, man. I'm it's 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 really interesting rereading this uh, this stuff and letters to the editor. That was one of my favourite things. People complaining. I like people. <laughs> Co actually, complaining like Catalyst was going to be able to do something about it. That was the best part. But eh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, Steve, can I do this? I'm gonna. I just want to show some people your website, just to, just to let you let the audience know that uh, who you are and everything. So, can you just you know, yeah, one of the things you said earlier, your blog posts are probably the neatest. You just want to tell us a little bit about, about some of your blogs and how often you do them and everything. Yeah, well, um, Cad Nauseam is my uh, company name, and uh, back in 2008, I started uh, a blog uh, called uh, Blog Nauseam. So, yeah, go ahead, click. Yep. Uh, so um, I write uh, maybe maybe ten, fifteen, twenty uh, posts uh, a month on on here, and uh, traditionally I've written about uh, AutoCAD and Autodesk, uh, but over the last uh, few years uh, I've been writing increasingly about BricsCAD as it's become more and more relevant. And uh, yeah, if you search on on BricsCAD, you'll find a whole bunch of uh, bunch of stuff on on there. Um, yeah, I guess you guys would be quite happy with that, those uh, that little series there. Why every uh, CAD manager should have a copy of BricsCAD. Uh, so anyway, I encourage people to uh, to just uh, check out uh, Blog Nauseum. You just yeah, type in CAD Nauseum or Blog Nauseum. Make sure you spell it right with an A at the end of Nauseum, <laughs> not Nauseum. Uh, that's the standard spelling mistake people make. Uh, but yeah, you, you, you'll find it. Um, and have a, yeah, have a search around. There's all sorts of stuff there. As I say, it goes back to 2008. Uh, and there's lots of uh, there's tips there. I'm writing more tips now. Uh, there is the, uh, the A and B tips series where, where I'm writing about uh, tips that are useful to both AutoCAD and BricsCAD oh. users. Because yeah. there's a lot of uh, common commonality, uh, you can write uh, stuff that helps both kind of people. Yeah, well, cool. But there's really only there should only be one kind of person, right? There should be bricks cat people. But but we're you know we're not we're not partisan here. <laughs> oh, no, no. There's no partisanism here whatsoever. Steve, let me. I've 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 read all of your blog posts. I believe. Um, and I'm impressed with the fact that you're impressed with Briggs Cat. I, I, because I know you well enough to know you're, you're a pretty hard guy to impress. Um, you've been doing this like the rest of us for a long time, maybe not as long as me, but, but darn close. And, and, you know, um, you are generally pretty conservative in terms of your praise. So I was always very impressed to hear you praise the speed and performance of BricsCAD. Um, you got a 90 second soundbite on that one for me. I'd, I'd love to hear your, your general thoughts. Yeah, well, that was, uh, that was one of the, uh, uh, one of my five surprises was the, uh, the performance there, um, Don. Um, the, the first thing uh, I noticed before I get onto the performance of the product itself, the, the first thing I really noticed uh, was uh, the performance of, of downloading and, and installing the thing because that's the first experience you get. Uh, so I'm used to uh, 
a download that might take 15 or, or 20 minutes and, and the same for the, uh, for the install. Some of the vertical based products take a lot longer than that. Uh, so I was very, very pleasantly surprised to be able to download in a straightforward way, just a straight download, no download manager, no hoops to, to, uh, to jump through. Just a straightforward uh, file that uh, you just double click on and, and it starts the actual install. It doesn't start unzipping itself and expanding itself and then running an installer. It, it just all happens pretty quickly. Uh, so yeah, it, it was, you, you can download and install BricsCAD uh, in, depending on your, your system and your internet connection in, in three to five minutes uh, and, and be up and running. So um, that that was my, the first thing that I was really uh, impressed with, just how straightforward the uh, the whole process was. And I have a thing about software that tries to be clever and fails. Uh, and I was impressed that there, there was no attempt to be clever uh, here. It, it just does the job and does it very well. So that, that was the, the first thing that really impressed me uh, was the download and install. Uh, and then when I started using the, the product itself, um, the first thing that a, a user of other CAD would be uh, um, impressed by would be the fact that you just click it and then a few seconds later, bang, up it, there it is. Uh, so you don't have to wait around for, for its first run uh, thing where it, it, it messes about for, for five minutes and, and eventually you get to, you get permission to actually draw with the, the product. Uh, it, it is, uh, it, that was another pleasant surprise. And, and once it's, once it is all set up, uh, I can, it generally takes about two seconds uh, from double clicking the icon to, to being able to draw, uh, okay. which, which is something I was not used to. Um, and yeah. something that uh, while I was uh, CAD managing, uh, and I was giving uh, people BricsCAD uh, to test, to evaluate. That was one thing that really impressed them because they're going in and out of, of applications all day and they don't want to wait for a long time. Uh, and yeah, just something that, that fires up very, very quickly was, was certainly um, a productivity gain before you even start using the product. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's funny because when we talk to our peers, um, so many of them get so emotional about one click, right? Yeah. And, and so they're saying things like, oh, there's an extra click in there. And you're like, oh my God, it's just one click. They're like, no, you don't understand. I do this 4,000 times a day, right? right? Yeah. And, 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 and people really get tense about the fact that there's an extra space bar or an extra carriage return or an extra right click to make something happen. So we strive to make the software, the workflow as elegant as we can, but if it takes five minutes to load the software, think of how many times you have to do that a day. And you can say, oh yeah, just load it once and stay in it. Well, good luck with that with some of these products. I mean, the beauty of BricsCAD, I think, is the fact that it's it's modern code. You know, BricsCAD's been, been, been around for 20 years. But all in the last eight to 10 years, it's been almost completely refactored. And it's, it's, it is really amazing. The performance, even the pre-release builds that we're working on now for the next release of BricsCAD perform super well with full debug in place. So we're really excited about what, how much faster the next version of BricsCAD might be. And we're always striving to make it better for our users because without them, we're nothing. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. It's faster than Microsoft Word. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Open it up. <laughs> that too. Yeah. And sorry, it's Microsoft, I didn't mean to yeah, actually undercut you guys in any way because I love yeah. Word. I spend my whole day in Word. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Not, I'm so you don't draw with it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got all kinds of issues, man. <laughs> yeah. I hope that. I'm having trouble making circles in Word. That doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Steve, what, what's it? Yeah, Vince it, and Steve, something about compatibility and one of your other surprises and, and Lisp and so forth. Yeah, well, yeah, I was going to ask about that because oftentimes when you're working with, you know, end users, you've got to do a lot of customization. And of course, you know, we, 
CAD manager, you've been around a long time. We've, we've had to, as CAD managers, you, know, you, you have to customize the product. What has your experience been around the, the Lisp and uh, in setting up uh, special applications for your clients? Okay, well, um, in my previous life uh, as, as a, a long-term CAD manager, uh, I had built up a, a huge library of extra stuff that my, my users uh, <clears throat> asked for over, over a period of a quarter of a century. Uh, and um, almost all of it is Lisp because you can use the stuff that was written a quarter of a century ago and it still works. As uh, maintenance is the, is the big uh, the big um, advantage of, of Lisp. You you don't have to recompile every time the um, they change the uh, the uh, the number on the compiler that's uh, used by the uh, the application <laughs> itself. And um, it's yeah, it, it was it there was a whole but I had over four hundred extra commands added to um, to AutoCAD. Uh, so, um, I, I first started investigating Brix CAD in, uh, in version uh, 14, about four years ago. Uh, and, uh, I just played around with it and it was nice to, to see that you could run some list stuff. I just, I just tried one or two things. I really started getting serious with it, uh, um, two plus years ago, uh, and bu built a version of our custom environment. Uh, in BricsCAD, and what really surprised me, and, and I was really happy to see, was was that it was so compatible that you could use a common folder, or well, have a whole tree of uh, of, of stuff, but a, a common uh, uh, set of files with all of our Lisp stuff in, uh, so that you could run both AutoCAD and BricsCAD, and have one set of custom stuff. Uh, and not have the the issue of having to copy stuff around and make new versions of stuff. It it was the level of compatibility was really really high, and and that impressed me a lot. Uh, what also impressed me about the the Lisp in BricsCAD was the performance of it. Uh, and I ran some benchmarks doing some stuff that was intensive stuff in in AutoCAD and and BricsCAD. And uh, it, it was about three times faster. Uh, anything wow. you needed to do that was doing a lot of lot of Lisp was three times faster. Uh, I remember one once. Uh, I, I have a little routine for uh, weeding out extra vertices in a polyline uh, or a series of polylines. And I had a user had one polyline that was he could not use uh, AutoCAD because this one polyline had had tens of thousands or hundred thousand vertices in it and he couldn't couldn't work uh, and so he wanted to weed that out so i went up and showed him the command in autocad for doing it and this is how you do it and set it going and uh it estimates how long it's got to take and i could see it was going to take uh, about 30 or 40 minutes so anyway i wandered back to my desk and i i Thought, hmm, well, I wonder how BricsCAD is going to go with this. So I, I had a copy of his his drawing, and I just ran the the, the same thing, and uh, it it uh, yeah, it was it was more than three times the speed. So so I was able to to ring him up and say, stop doing it here. Use this one. I've already done it for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. I've had some similar experience, Don. Uh, I've shown you a couple of videos where I've done like side by side comparisons, running code. Um, you know, it's it's blindingly fast. And and the other thing I and I was going to ask you if you ran into this too. And in some cases, I find that um, in BricsCAD, it just I don't know if it just seems there. It, sometimes it'll catch those issues that. Sometimes it works in the other CAD system, but it works and it shouldn't. And then I find out that's the reason it doesn't work in both is because I made a mistake and <laughs> it kind of comes, it goes up in Brick's CAD and I can see it. Uh, and that kind of brings my next question into to talking about Blade. And if Heidi were here, she would ask me what that means uh, or what the acronym is. <laughs> but I'm going to say, let's, let's ask what does Blade, Blade stand for? <laughs> yeah, she, she would ask me that. She does that all the time. Ask yeah, Steve. To hear, hear your, your thoughts on that. Okay, uh, so Blade uh, stands for uh, BricsCAD Lisp Advanced Development Environment. 
Um, who named that's it? A really cool, that's a really cool name. The person who thought of that <laughs> could get a prize. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the, the one problem I did have with uh, with Brickscad's Lisp is that there was no development environment, which meant meant that uh, if you wanted to run a um, a dual environment where you're running AutoCAD and you may be converting to Brickscad over, over a period of, of several releases or something like that. Uh, you had to have AutoCAD there to, to have a, a, a development environment a deep, to be able to debug the code. Uh, and if there were, was something specific to BricsCAD that didn't work in BricsCAD, now, now that's fairly rare, but it does happen. Uh, and in those small percentage of cases, uh, you were stuck. You, you had to go back to the old uh, 20th century methods of uh, putting uh, print statements in your code and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, that was a bit of a, a problem uh, until recently, until version 18.2, uh, where uh, Blade was introduced. And that uh, takes over where uh, VLIDE, Blide, however you want to pronounce it, where that left off in 1999, uh, we've leapt forward 20 years and, um, and we have a, a much more modern, much more capable uh, debugger to the uh, integrated development environment and, and debugger to the extent where I now use it for all of my um, AutoCAD development work. So I, I, I no longer use the VLIDE. I, I just develop in BricsCAD for my... AutoCAD using clients. And in fact, I was doing that this morning. Uh, and um, I was able to do a, do a job more quickly, more efficiently uh, this very day uh, because Blade exists. Nice. And, and by the way, we were going to call it FOIL, F O I L, uh, but we really couldn't get good words for that because, you know, Steve's a fencer, so we said FOIL. So then we said, well, what are we going to do? We can't use FOIL because, but we can use Blade. So well, I'm actually more of a cyber fencer, so you'd have to think of something. <laughs> saber, that, but yeah. yeah, but that's you know, saber's kind of overused sometimes. I think. But look at, ooh, hey, that's I just pretty. want to show this quote that up on your uh, blog uh, page, uh, Steve. I love this right here. What you say about Blade, and uh, so so yeah, so just letting the audience know up on your uh, blog post that you have information up there about Blade. Yeah, and by the way, guys, uh, uh, in London, we'll be offering uh, some sessions on Blade. Steve will be in London with us, so I'm sure he'll be glad to go into a lot more detail um, with his experiences. And Steve, just briefly, uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, what, what were your thoughts about the, the Brixis conferences you've attended in the past? Well, that's, uh, they really opened up my eyes. So as I said, I, I, I had started looking in 2014 with version 14 and didn't take it all that seriously. Uh, and I knew it was pretty capable and had some nice, nice things. The performance was definitely a standout. Um, but it's still in my mind was still, a, it, it's a, it was an AutoCAD clone. And, and an AutoCAD clone is something that's like AutoCAD and not catching up. So that, that was my view of it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it, you're always playing catch up. You're a little bit behind. That that, that was my, my view of it. Uh, what the the conference in um, in Munich uh, really did was open my eyes. At, Hang on. Oh, well, no, I'm wrong. Uh, it's not something that's catching up. It's something that has already gone beyond uh, and uh, and is accelerating away uh, because I could see. Uh, what features uh, were available in it, uh, how it was being um, progressed towards the future, uh, the, uh, the parametric 3D stuff, the, um, the sheet metal, the, the BIM, uh, it was all well beyond uh, where somebody used to AutoCAD would, would expect their product to be going. They, in order to go to those places, they would have to move to a different product that doesn't work like AutoCAD. Mm. Uh, 
So that really impressed me. That, that, that blew me away, the, the, the conference, uh, just the capability of the software and, and where it was going. Uh, and again, in Paris, uh, more of the same. Um, I was impressed with, with how it had progressed and, and what was going on with it. And, and, and this year in London, there'll be even more. In fact, the next release of, of BricsCAD, BricsCAD BIM, BricsCAD Mechanical, will all be highlighted there. So I think you're going to see some things that are pretty amazing. Uh, we're excited. We're super excited. We're glad you're coming to join us again. And we are in the brewery in Shoreditch. So, I mean, it can't get a whole lot better than that. You're in uh, a brewery, guys. Yes. We're having a CAD conference in a brewery. Imagine the mindset that goes into making decisions like that. It's just Amazing. Some and genius. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't me either. It oh. was Eric, actually. But that's okay. That's okay. Hey, um, so, I, Don, I want to finish real fast on the five Yeah, we things. have to run out of time. Yeah, so uh, the last, uh, the fifth thing, support, Steve. Your experience with the support. And then after that, we got to close up the show here. Okay, how many time? How much money? How much? How much money? How much, how much time, money do you 60, have? Not 60, a whole lot. Sixty man. seconds. I live 60 in California. Seconds. Okay, okay. <laughs> I won't go into details. What really impressed me was that I uh, could get support that worked. So if I have a problem, uh, it is going to be a fairly difficult problem. Uh, so I'm I'm used to sending off a report and having to go backwards and forwards for a couple of weeks before somebody actually understands the problem. And eventually I get somebody that says, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look into that eventually. Um, instead I got to, I got a response from an actual developer within hours, not days or weeks or months. I've had, I have had years, <laughs> but uh, I got to speak to a developer uh, and um, I have had, had it, the developers say to me, yes, we have now fixed this within 24 hours. Uh, and so I just have to wait for the next build. So I have, I've reported a problem uh, and it gets actually fixed in the software within two weeks. Uh, and that blew me away. That's a big surprise. That actually now, I just want to say your week. mileage may vary, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, <laughs> I can't not promise little, that to everybody, but it, yeah. it's, you know, and, and again, guys, remember when, when you use our support system, please, um, the more detail that you can deliver, Steve made an interesting point there. We dispatch support requests to the development teams that actually build the product. So, so the more detail you can give them, attach drawings, attach scripts, whatever it is that you need. Screenshots. The easier it's going to be for them to determine where the, the issue is. And, and you might be surprised at, at, at how, how quickly they can come back with a response. The other cool thing is if you file a support request in the, the, BricsCAD, the Brics' system, um, you'll be notified when that support request is referenced in our world-class release notes, which... Um, That's you right. Yeah. Nah, it's other people. Oh, you write some of them. do with any of that. I, I've been chastised for making them too funny, which I just really don't understand. But, you know, there's a lot of really serious people in CAD, and so as long as they're happy there. Not miserable. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, you guys, are, we're getting a little wait, late wait, on the time. Wait, one more thing. One more oh, thing, Matt. Okay, hang one on. more thing. Okay. One more thing, because we're already way over, and we've got Steve, and <laughs> he's not ready for bed yet because his wine's not gone. So, the Arc Daily, ArcDaily.com today, uh, article about Bricks CAD BIM, and a link to our white paper on the Bricks CAD BIM value proposition. So if you are interested in an alternative method, that is one that uses things like DWG and XREFs and leverages 80 to 85% of what you already know about CAD to get started in BIM, you'll want to go to Arc Daily today and download that white paper. Okay, Matt, I'm done. Cool. Okay. Well, hey, <laughs> just real fast, Steve, thank you very much for staying up late yeah, and uh, joining us. And uh, thanks for the five tips. We'll make this live on, you know, on Facebook, of course, and also too on YouTube. And then since Heidi's not here, everybody who's listening, download the software and like us on Facebook and YouTube. And then next and week, 
next week, Don, you're going to be in Gant, Gant Belgium. Belgium. Yeah. Gonna He's going to be, be at the headquarters with Heidi, and we're going to broadcast there live, and Vince and I are going to still be in our home offices. And say goodbye, you guys. Thanks, Cheers. Steve. Cheers. Bye, guys. Steve, Steve thanks, man. Care. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We can't all do it together. <laughs> we gotta stop talking so much, man. <laughs> okay, okay, we're we're done. I'm gonna stop the recording. Hold on.